Hey guys, my name is TK from Ready Church. I thank you for tuning in today. You could be anywhere, but you decided to be here. You're in for an amazing word today. Sit back, relax, and it's going to be great. Listen, today, if I say Galatians, it's only because I'm from the South. So I'm going to try to sound educated and just say Galatians. But if I say Galatians, don't judge me. Okay, I got my degree. Galatians, okay? All right. Galatians 1, 6 through 7. Galatians 1, 6 through 7. Thank you, Lord. Watch me. And the Bible says, and I marvel that you are turning away so soon. From him who calls you into the grace of Christ to a different gospel. Which is not another, but there are some who trouble you and want to pervert the gospel of Christ. I'm going to read that again. The Apostle Paul says, I marvel that you are turning away so soon from him who calls you in the grace of Christ to a different gospel. I want you to pay attention to that. I marvel that you are turning away so soon from him who calls you into the grace of Christ to a different gospel, which is not another. What he's saying here is, you're leaning into a different gospel and there is not another gospel, but it's leaning into a gospel is, and it's not the gospel that you receive from Jesus. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. Stay with me. Which is not another, but there are some who trouble you and want to pervert the gospel of Jesus Christ. I want to entitle this sermon very simply, The Original Gospel. The original gospel. Look at your name and say the original gospel. The original gospel. The original gospel. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. The original gospel. Father God, I thank you for saying exactly what needs to be said. What needs to be said, Lord. Thank you for saying exactly what needs to be said. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Preach to me. Say what you want to say. Do what you want to do. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Let me ask you all a question. If you had one sneaker that you could wear for the rest of your life, but you had no other shoes and the shoe never got dirty, let me ask it again. If you could have one pair of shoes that you could wear for the rest of your life, Ivan, and the shoe never got dirty, but it's the only shoe you could own. What shoe is it? Forces. Forces. Whites? I say the blacks is, you know. <laughs> <laughs> the blacks is dangerous activity nowadays. I know what you Same. Same. White, white ones? Okay. Because of? What you got? Retro, Retro ones. Which ones? Any, any retro one? I got you. Go ahead, Dion. I was waiting for you to call on me. Man. Okay, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> the Black Cat Fours. The Black Cat Fours. Those are hard. Those are hard. I like those. I like those. I like those. I like those. Why you didn't ask me for me? Because I was coming. That's why I turned and looked at you. Jada. I love the accountability, though. I love it. I love, I love Jada. I love Jada. Jada, what about you? A6. Okay. I like you. A6. Okay. 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 Me personally? Yeah. Okay, cool. Okay. B, what about you? I'm into Air Maxes. Air Maxes. Okay. Key, what about you? Four. Four. Okay. 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 J Love, what about you? Air Max Ones. Air Max Ones. Okay. Okay. Denaja, what about you? New Balances. Okay. 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 I like it. Gabby, what about you? Rick, is that again? Bread ones. Bread ones? Oh, yeah. Okay, now we're talking. There we go. I think all those are good picks. All those are good picks. All those are good picks. Let me eat. Are we eating straight? Yeah. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Crocs. The Crocs. Okay. <laughs> Crocs. Okay. 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 I'm not going to hold you. There is a pair. Have y'all seen those Salih Havenbury Crocs? Those are hard. Those are hard. The one shoe I could wear for the rest of my life, never get tired of it, is the shoe I'm wearing right now. The Air Jordan Chicago one, first one ever come out. I need another pair of these. I might see if my wife will buy them for my birthday. Amen. I love, amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord in here. Don't start that key. I'll start running. Listen to me, y'all. Listen to me. I love the Air Jordan one because it's the original. 
It's the original. I just love this shoe. I don't care how many times they re-release it. I'm going to get it. The black toes drop in October. I'm going to get those too. But if I could just get any shoe, it's this one. I can wear it every single day. I love sneaker culture, and I love where it's at right now. I love the fact that you can go and finish line right now and Jordans are sick. We, I, I love the fact that you ain't got to stand in line like you used to. I, when I was in college, when Jordans would drop, my man, I would literally leave school. I went to Garden Grove University an hour from here. I would come down with my guy Marcus. We would camp from 4 p.m. to 8 a.m. the next day. Just sit outside. You can call me crazy all you want to. I had the joints the next day, and I had the bed ready going to class. That was just my life back then. Very financially irresponsible. I, I was. I'm sorry. So, so I love the sneaker culture today because these kids, they're wearing the collabs. They're wearing um, these customs. They're, they're wearing these exclusives because when I was coming up, I got any 90s babies. I got you like early 2000s, like he was like, like he was like 10, 12, 11, early 2000s. Okay, when I when we was coming up, you either got the shoe that was in Foot Locker, in Foot Action, in Champs, or in East Bay Magazine. For those of you who know about that, you know what I'm saying. Let me take you back a little bit. If the shoe wasn't in there, then most likely you got a you got a shoe man shoe. You got a shoe man Jordan. For those of you who don't know what Shoe Man Jordans are, let me educate you. <laughs> shoe Man Jordans are Jordans that look like Jordans, but they ain't Jordans. The Shoe Man was known as a street entrepreneur. A street entrepreneur. And he would get these Jordans from factories that nobody knew where they came from, but he got them, right? And the street entrepreneur, he would sell these Jordans in the trap. He would sell these Jordans at your local grocery store parking lot. Or he would sell these Jordans at a gas station parking lot. But the problem was, when you got these Jordans, usually it was always somebody who wanted to be cool that got the shoe man Jordans. And it wasn't even the fact that some people couldn't afford them. I guess they just wanted to be different. I knew a guy, he wore a pair of Shoe Man Jordans. They weren't real, they weren't the original. They was just some wild colorway and he liked them. The thing about Shoe Man Jordans is that when they crease, they don't crease like the originals. The original Jordans, they crease at the toe. Them Shoe Man Jordans, they crease on the outside, on the inside, they crease on the tongue, they crease on the back. Them shoes, they just break down, they brittle. Cause they ain't got no solid foundation. Because Shoe Man Jordans are not the original Jordan. You can buy a Shoe Man Jordan and, and try to coordinate your outfits. But if you buy Shoe Man Jordans, I give it three weeks. That shoe gonna be crumbling all over. It's not gonna hold up because it's a Shoe Man Jordan and it's not an original Jordan. There are some Christians who are struggling to walk in their faith because they received the Shoe Man's gospel. Oh. Oh, y'all missed it. Y'all right. missed it. Right. Because the problem is, the reason why they can't walk in the original gospel is because they received the gospel that can't hold up. They can't walk in victory because they got a shoe man's gospel. They can't walk in healing because they got a shoe man's gospel. They can't walk in the blessings of God because they got a shoe man's gospel. And when they try to operate in the confidence of the Lord, their shoes are brittle because they received the shoe man's gospel and not the original gospel. And we live in a generation that can't tell the difference. I don't mean to make anybody mad, but I came to let you know that Moses is not the gospel. That Jeremiah is not the gospel. That Lamentations is not the gospel. That Ezra is not the gospel. That Zechariah is not the gospel. Now watch me. Is the gospel in Genesis? Is the gospel in Exodus? Is the gospel in Isaiah? Amen. But if it don't point to Jesus directly, it's not the gospel. And the problem is, we live in a generation where son, that we, know, that we don't know the difference between the shoe man gospel and the original gospel. Mm -hmm. And today it is my job by the Holy Spirit to teach you the original gospel. I want us to go to the book of Galatians. Galatians 1, 6 through 7. The apostle Paul says, I marvel that you are turning away so soon from him who called you in the grace of Christ 
to a different gospel, which is not another, but there are some who trouble you and want to pervert the gospel of Jesus Christ. Can I give you context? Galatia is an area where the Apostle Paul, who wrote two-thirds of the New Testament, he visited this church to plant it to grow a community of believers. Who was the Apostle Paul? The Apostle Paul is a man who at one, at one time killed Christians. He did it for sport. He did it for fun. But then he has an encounter with the Lord Jesus, and then after he has an encounter with the Lord Jesus, he is then called into the ministry. After he is called into the ministry, God uses him to write two-thirds of the New Testament. Are you following me? And as Paul is building relationship with this community, I mean, he sets revival to this community. He's loving on this community. He's, he's teaching the gospel of, of grace. He's teaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. He's ministering to these people. Here's the problem. The people he was talking to were known as Gentiles. Say Gentiles. Gentiles. Not Gentile like in rush hour. Say Gentiles. <laughs> Gentiles. Gentiles are people. I know I will appreciate that joke. Gentiles. Gentiles were people who were not under the Jewish covenant. If you were not under the Jewish covenant, then you were known as a Gentile. So Paul was ministering to Gentiles about the grace of God. And because Jesus has come, you can now be engrafted into the family of God. Are you with me? Yeah. The problem was, as he set this church on fire, he leaves to go plant another church. When he leaves, there's a group of Jews, Jews who are bound by the law. I'll teach it next week. The law of Moses, they come in and say, listen, I know Jesus is dope, I know Jesus is important, but you still got to get circumcised. Yeah, I know y'all believe in that Jesus stuff and in free salvation, but y'all still got to follow the, the dietary laws of the law. I mean, I know y'all believe in Jesus, but y'all still can't wear polyester and linen. Like, you know, you, know, you still got to do that. So what, what's happening is, Paul gets wind of it, and he writes this letter. And Galatians is one long rebuke. He's letting them know, wait a minute, hold on, hold on. I taught you the gospel. Y'all allow people to come into your community and pervert it. And we know this because Paul says, I marvel. Wait a minute. I marvel means that I'm astonished. It means I'm taken aback. Paul is saying the utter audacity. I marvel that you are turning away so soon from him who called you to the grace of God. Notice that Paul says, I marvel that you are turning away so soon. He's shocked because I just taught y'all this. And y'all turning away so quick. Because listen to me. Most of us learn commandments before we learn Christ. Most of us, you learn the Ten Commandments before you learn the Gospel of Jesus. You learn what you had to do under a covenant that doesn't apply to you before you learn everything that was in the new covenant of Jesus. And watch me. Whenever, whenever you have been programmed in something old, when something new tries to come in, your body's going to fight against it. Most of us have been pro programmed to the old covenant. So when you try to receive the new covenant, your body fights it. Let me give you an example. Um, I've, I've been on a transformation journey in my weight loss and in um, trying to build my body to be healthier with Jamaica. Me and Jamaica been doing it together. That's been my accountability. And what I've been trying to do every day for like the last two months is I've tried to be in a calorie deficit, eat more protein, and eat more vegetables. Pray for me, Greg. It's been a journey. Okay? <laughs> because Pastor C was used to eating cookout and Krispy Kreme and pizza, and all that stuff whenever he wanted to. Just an undisciplined life. But then one day I was looking at one of the old sermons, and I said, I didn't notice that my belly was popping out in them essential shirts, and nobody told me. I can't, no, let me take a break. I cannot believe that y'all supposed to be people who love me, and I was wearing them essential shirts to cover my belly, and then it started to stick out, and y'all had the utter audacity to not tell me, Rasan, how can me and you be cool, and you didn't come up to me and say, hey, big dog, I know you like this oversized clothes, but, but but, but it's sticking out. So I had to, I had to take some accountability, <laughs> and I had to say, "Big dog, you got to, you got to slim it down. You got to trim it down. You're looking pretty wild out here." But the problem is, Greg, I've been eating more vegetables. This past Thursday, I had a great protein-based, low-calorie meal. It was chopped up chicken, grilled. It was onions. It was peppers. It was rice. It was really good. And then I had like this bowl of zucchini and yellow squash. Mm. Okay. Now, it was new to you, but you know, this is new for me, you know what I'm saying? This is new. Now, when I first started eating it, it was cool. 
But then that fifth bite, I'm chewing it, and you ever been eating something and you go, hmm? <laughs> like, whoa, whoa. So I had, to take a, I had to take a deep breath and chew it. And I had to say, no, I'm going to eat this. So then I took another bite. And <sighs> had to slow down. And it's amazing because I was near the end of the bowl. And I started doing that. The problem is I was doing that on vegetables. I ain't never did that with pizza. <laughs> I ain't never on a burger. I ain't, I ain't never with the cookout. No, I wouldn't uh, put it down. But what I'm trying to explain to you is my body is, is trying to refuse the goodness of me trying to experience something new because it wants something old. What I'm trying to teach you is even though your flesh don't want the grace of God because your flesh wants rules because rules know how to condition you quicker than grace does. So your flesh wants rules, but your soul needs grace. And just because you don't want to eat it don't mean you don't need to eat it. You got to feed yourself the grace of God because most of us grew up on rules and we wonder why we struggled in our relationship with God. But the problem is your flesh wants rules. I'm going to talk about it next week. But Paul is trying to get them to understand that I've called you into something new and you turned away from it. He goes even further to say in there, you're turning away so soon from who called you in the grace of Christ to a different gospel. Stop. I've been reading the Bible my entire life. When I was 26 years old, I read the scripture differently. Because I asked the text a question, Greg. If the Bible is saying, through the Apostle Paul, by the Holy Spirit, I marvel that you are turning away so soon from the grace of Christ to a different gospel. Jada, I asked myself, was the original gospel. If they're turning from the grace of Christ to a, di to, to, to a different gospel, I have no choice but to ask the text, what's the original gospel? Is that a bad question? It's not a bad question. What's the original gospel? I want you to write this down if you're taking notes. The word gospel in the original Greek language, it means too good to be true news. Google it. The word gospel means too good to be true news. There are so many definitions of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Let me add to them. The gospel of Jesus Christ is the message of Jesus' death. Let me back up. The gospel of Jesus Christ is the message of Jesus' coming, his death, his burial, his resurrection, and his ascension. Let me repeat it. The gospel of Jesus Christ is the message of Jesus' coming, his death, his burial, his resurrection, and his ascension, which restored man back to fellowship with God. Watch this part. And because you are in fellowship with God, you have access to the same promises that Jesus has. Why are y'all quiet after what I just said? Let me repeat it. I said that because of Jesus, you have access to the same promises that Jesus has. Watch me. Under the old covenant, you had to work for the promise. Under the new covenant, the promises work for you. Oh, don't miss that. Don't miss that. Because the problem is, some of us think that we have to perform in order to get a promise. But I came to let you know because of Jesus, you don't have to perform the promise because you're already in the promise. Stay with me, y'all. So the original gospel is not only the too good to be true news, but Paul gives it a name. He calls it the grace of Christ. Can, do, do, we, do we not see that in there? Read it with me. I marvel that you are turning away so soon from him who called you into the grace of Christ to a different gospel. So clearly he's saying the different gospel is what? The grace of Christ, right? Do y'all see that on my trip? Okay. So, Pastor Canaan, what is the grace of Christ? I'm so glad you asked. Grace in the Greek language is the word charis. Everybody say charis. Come on, put that on it, okay? It's okay. It's okay. That's how they say it. Charis. All right, ready? One, two, three. There you go. There you go. You sound like Greek scholars. And that word charis, it means unmerited favor. The, it, whenever you see the word favor,
favor in the Bible, you can interchange it with the word grace and you'll still be biblically correct. The Bible says in Ephesians 2, 8 and 9, write this scripture now, I'm going to say it every single week for the next three months. For we are saved by grace through faith. That not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. It is the gift of God. You can't earn grace. The Bible says in Romans 11 verse 6, if it's of grace, it's of grace. But if it's of works, it's of works. It can't be both. It can't be both. Let me, let me give you an example. Let me help you. Um, Cause of, uh, he get ready to get married soon. Y'all make some noise for him. When, when you gave when you gave your fiance the ring did you give her the receipt? why? because you paid for it because if you gave her the receipt that is an indication that she got to keep up the payments if she got to keep up the payments it's no longer a gift it's something she's in debt of <sighs> When Jesus took on your sin, he did not leave a receipt. He cleared your debt so that you can walk in his fullness. And he did it because of grace. Stay with me, y'all. Watch me. In, 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 in Greek culture, in Greek culture, uh, Leah, they, they, they would describe the term grace using three characters. The patron, the broker, and the client. Everybody say the patron, the, patron. the, broker, the broker, and the client. And the, client. the client needed what the patron had. But because the client couldn't afford it, they had to go to the broker. And the broker had the ability to purchase from the patron what the client couldn't afford. And when the broker would purchase it from the patron, he would give it to the client and it was known as grace. Let me, oh my God, stay with me. Can I tell them who you used to work for? Can I tell them? It's a part of my sermon. Don't mess up my sermon. Can I tell them? Okay. I appreciate it. I, I, I'll take you after lunch. So, so Greg, Greg been going here for a while, but, but for some reason, I, I, don't, I don't know why we didn't know this, but I didn't know he used to work for LeBron James. Yeah, you, yeah, you, you know, you know, Olympic MVP LeBron James. <laughs> you know, le leading scorer of the league, LeBron James. Go. Forty years old, making that Jordan Wizard. Uh -huh. Anyway, we ain't gonna, we ain't gonna, we ain't gonna, we ain't gonna that. <laughs> but, but, but he used to work for LeBron James, and I was hanging out with Greg on Friday, and he said, "Yeah, now I used to work for LeBron, but what people don't know is that if you really want to get to LeBron." You need to get to the people around him. Yeah. And I was like, really? He was like, yeah, man. He was like, if you need to get to Maverick, if you need to, if you need to get to LeBron, you really need to talk to Maverick. Or if you need to talk to LeBron, you really need to talk to Rich Paul. Is that not what you said? Okay. So there are times where Greg wanted to get something to LeBron, but it was better for Greg to get to Maverick, who was LeBron's manager, and Maverick will relate to LeBron, get the okay from LeBron, then get it to Greg. Don't miss this. LeBron is the patron. Maverick is the broker. And Greg is the client. Greg does not have anything without access to LeBron. But the only way he can get to LeBron is if he leans on Maverick. I'm trying to tell you that if you need healing from God, the only way you can get it is by leaning on Jesus. If you need blessing from God, the only way you can get it is leaning on Jesus. The only way you can get access to the promises of God is through Jesus because God is the patron. Jesus is the broker and you are the client. When Jesus gives you healing, when he gives you blessings, that's known as grace. Am I making sense? So the grace of Christ is the gospel because when Jesus came down and he died, he was buried, he was resurrected, he ascended, he did it for you. So that all you had to do was receive based on you believing in his message. And his message is not based on performance, 
is based on grace. Well, here's the next part. Because the Bible says, I marvel that you are turning away so soon from him who called you into the grace of Christ to a different gospel. Kiki, what's a different gospel? If the original gospel is the grace of Christ, right, then what's a different gospel? A different gospel is a gospel you have to perform for it to work. If you have to perform for it, it's not the gospel. If you have to earn it, it's not the gospel. Most people teach, if you do this, then God will do that. Let me mess you up. If you read your Bible, then God will bless you. Let's go deeper. If you come to church, you come to church on time, then you'll see God's blessings. Let's go even further. If you give a certain amount of money, then God will bless you. But Christianity is not do, do, do. Christianity is done, done, done. Yeah. Oh, y'all missing it. Y'all not doing me right this morning. Christianity is not do, do, do. It's done, done, done. Christianity is because Jesus did this, I got access into that. Because Jesus did this, I got access into that. If the gospel that you are hearing is not pointing you back to Jesus, it's not the gospel. Amen. I don't care if you teach Moses. If you teach Moses and it don't point back to Jesus, it's not the gospel. I don't care if you're teaching Elijah. If Elijah don't bring you back to Jesus, it ain't the gospel. Because the problem is, we teach all of these characters when the whole point of the scripture is Jesus. And the problem is, we don't know the difference between the original gospel and the fake gospel. Most of us, let me say this, because I always give you this disclaimer. I'm not being disrespectful to where anybody comes from, to where anybody grew up. I don't know where you come from. But I just got to be honest. Most of us grew up possibly receiving a gospel that was based on your behavior instead of God's grace. Mm -hmm. Most of us grew up with a gospel that if you didn't behave properly, how could God bless you? Mm -hmm. That if you weren't, here we go, that if you weren't living right, then you got to get right. Oh, you know what they? You know, oh, you know what saying used to kill me? Either you get right or get left. <laughs> you ever heard that? You ever heard that? Can I tell you something? Let me ask you a question. How are you gonna get right on your own? Can I tell you something? You can't get right. You have to be made right. Don't miss that. Amen. You can't get right by yourself. What, what you what, what you want me to do to get right? You want to put more in the collection plate? That's gonna make me right. What you, you want me to come to Bible study more? That's gonna make me right. Now, don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. I believe in giving, reading your Bible, and coming to church. Those are good works. But let me help you. Good works don't save you, but you are saved for good works. Let me back it up and say it again. Good works don't save you, but you are saved for good works. Pastor Ken, what does that mean? That means that giving won't save you, but once you are saved, you get a revelation, then you'll give. Right. Reading your Bible won't save you, but once you get saved and you get revelation, you should learn how to read the Bible to understand the promises that are already yours. But the problem is, we think that doing these things is going to move us closer to the Lord. Oh, I'm about to miss some of Kiki. Kiki told me Friday night, she said, Pastor Canaan, it be songs that I've been wanting to listen to, but I can't listen to them anymore because you don't taught against them. And we was at this event, and the song was playing, I'm chasing after you. You heard that song? I can't stand this song. I just don't like it. I know y'all like that song. I'm chasing you. Yeah, I know y'all like it. I know you do. But why? But I, I don't see in the new covenant where we gotta chase after God when the Bible says goodness and mercy follows me. Yeah. Oh my God. They're not doing me right. You know what else makes me mad since we're already on it, since we're already here? I can't stand these songs that say, God, we need more of you. We need more of your power, God. We need more of your spirit, God. We just need more. We need more. We need another outpouring of you. How, how, how are you going to ask God for more when he gave you his fullness? Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. That ain't going up where we are Because we come to church and we sing all these songs that I need more of you. I need more of you. When he gave you his spirit. Mm -hmm. Last time I checked, the Holy Ghost don't leak out. Yeah. You know, like, 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 bird, like, how? Holy Spirit, like every time you pray, you need a recharge. 
every time you prophesy and go down. No, 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 no. You have his fullness. Now let me let me let me bring more clarity. You can grow in your revelation of God. Mm -hmm. You can grow in the scripture. But when people say stuff like, oh man, I'm trying to get closer to God. Can I go ahead and bless your life now? You can't get closer to God than where you already are. You know why? Because you're already in him. See, we take that stuff for granted. When the Bible says you in Christ, you in Christ. You know the problem is, Greg? We think we need more of Jesus because we don't feel close to him. But I came to let you know that Christianity is not a feeling, it's a position. I'm placed in him. So guess what? If I don't feel close to him, I'm still close to him. There's this guy who used to go to our church. His name is Drew Muzar, and he coined this phrase called Double Dutch Christianity. Because some people, if they read their Bible, they was in Christ. If they didn't read their Bible, they was out of Christ. That's how most people teach. If they give, they in Christ. If they don't give, they out of Christ. Can I tell you something? If you don't read your Bible for a whole week, you still in Jesus. If you don't give for the rest of the year, you still in Jesus. If you don't come to church, I gotta be honest. I know pastors ain't supposed to say this. But if you don't come to church for the rest of this year, you still in Christ. Should you come to church? Yes, for revelation, understanding, and community. Should you give? Yes, so that the house that you serve in can, can continue to grow. Should you read your Bible? Yes, for revelation and understanding. But don't sit back and think that you got closer with God today because you're here. Yeah. Good. Yeah. You hear what I'm telling you? Yeah. Because what's going to happen is if you miss a Sunday, you're going to open the door for condemnation. Oh, here we go. I ain't supposed to be teaching this. I'm supposed to be holding it in. But the problem is there's so many believers, Bird, who think that because I did this, then that makes me closer to God. We get even more so goofy that if I listen to Kirk Franklin, God got to pay my rent. <laughs> then as soon as then as soon as the rent paid, I'm going back to that new drape. I'm going back to that new three pack. I'm going back to it. No, 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 no. Listen to me. I'm not trying to teach you poor behavior. I just want to let you know that your behavior don't dictate your blessing. But when you get revelation of the blessing, it will dictate your behavior. Am I, am I making sense, y'all? I got to keep going because we got to go. Watch me. So the Bible says, so the Bible says, I marvel that you are turning away so soon from the grace of Christ to a different gospel. What's a different gospel? A different gospel is a gospel where you got to perform for it. Are you clear? Okay, last part. Here's the part that tripped me up the night. Because Paul says, there are some, there are some who want to pervert and trouble. Those who want to trouble you and pervert the gospel of Christ. That bothered me. Because why would somebody want to trouble you and pervert the gospel of Christ? These are the people, now remember I was telling you that the Jews were coming in, mixing it in the community, and they were telling them, hey, all that Jesus stuff ain't it. Y'all still got to be circumcised to God follow. Remember, I, remember I was telling, telling you that, right? Here's the problem. These Jews, because they were connected to God through the law, they still had to get connected to Jesus by receiving him as well. So they were trying to tell these, these Gentiles, hey, you can follow Jesus all you want, but if you really want to be connected to God, you got to do what we do. But that's not the gospel. That's not what Paul taught them. That's not the revelation of Jesus. But I want to know why would Paul say that those guys wanted to trouble them and wanted to pervert the gospel? Can I tell you something? And I'm not, and I'm not trying to be mean. It's easier for people to put control over you rather than trust the gospel in you. All right, here we go. As a pastor, it's not my job to police you. It's my job to pastor you. There's a difference. A lot of people are, po are policed in Christianity, but they are not shepherded into Christianity. Can I tell I don't care. I don't. I got to say it. It's so easy for me to give you a rule rather than wait on you to understand revelation. It's easy for me to tell Tease, stop wearing hats to church and not give her no revelation. But what I did was I just put her in bondage. 
because I never explained to her why she can't wear hats. And I just told her, don't wear a hat no more. And now every time she out there, she put on a hat. Now she thinks she ain't seeing. Let me go even deeper. There are some people who are told that you can't even wear open toe shoes in church. And now, when they wear open toe shoes, they feel like God ran judgment on them. And I tell you something, God don't care nothing about your sandals. <laughs> God don't care nothing about your open toe shoes or your hat. The problem is, we create these rules because it's easy to control you rather than trust the Holy Spirit within you. So, for some people, they want me to tell Kiki every week, stop sitting. Girl, you better stop sitting. Girl, you better stop sitting. Listen, let me tell you something. You better stop sitting. You know what's going to happen? She going to stop sitting when she around me. <laughs> but when she go home, she going to do whatever she want to do. Because I gave her a rule, but I didn't introduce her to revelation. Mm -hmm. Because when you have revelation, you don't need regulations. Right. Don't miss that. When you have revelation, you don't need regulation. I can tell Kiki all day long. You better quit, you better quit sitting. She come in here, she's going to start pretending that she's holy. Right. Mm -hmm. Why? Watch me. She not even trying to please God, she's trying to please me. Uh -huh. oh, I'm about to mess you up. Most of us grew up in a Christianity where we try to please the pastor before we please God. Uh -huh. Okay. Okay. Y'all, y'all all right? Okay, because because if I keep telling Kiki, stop sinning, stop sinning, she's going to come to me, I ain't seeing this week, and you lying. <laughs> you just doing that, so I'll leave you alone. It's like, y'all remember uh, Smokey from Friday? Y'all remember, remember when Debo showed up, and he pulled up, and he took a red train, and then, smoke, and, then, and then Smokey was like, let's jump him. Craig said, sit your butt down, man, I got mind control over Debo. <laughs> he, he be like, shut up. I be quiet. But when he leave, I be talking to him. We do the same thing in church. You come to church, I tell you to sit down and shut up. You be quiet. But when you leave, you be talking again. I tell you to come to church. You come to church, you be holy. But when you leave, you be sitting again. Because I keep telling you to stop sitting. Stop sitting. But if I tell you that you're holy, if I tell you that you're righteous, if I tell you that God loves you, if I preach Jesus to you, if I keep giving you grace, if I keep giving you mercy, if I keep giving you a relationship, sooner or later, what I'm teaching her is going to be pulled out of her. Because can I tell you this? You are not going to live right until you believe right. And the problem is, we try to get people to live right before they believe right. You know why? Because we, we try to put people's transformation on our timetable. Y'all yeah. not ready. So, so, so what we do is, we tell you to come to church and we assign you an accountability partner. I don't care. I don't, I don't care about none of this religious junk. We, 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 we tell you to come down to the front, we give you an accountability partner, and the only time they call you is to make sure that you're not sinning. Mm -hmm. they, don't call, they don't call to remind you who you are in Christ. Hey girl, I'm just checking in to make sure you went hunting this week. Y'all better stop acting like I'm in the line. Y'all better cut that out. I know all the tricks. I know all the games. I know all of them. The only reason why they create small groups in some churches is to police the people who there. Can we be honest today? Can y'all stop acting like this with me and stop acting like people don't play games so that they can manipulate and control people? Listen to me. It's not my job to police you. It's my job to pastor you. I ain't stupid. I know all types of stuff that go on in this church. I ain't dumb. I know I got fornicators in here. I know I got masturbators in here. I know I got weed smokers in here. I know I got addicts in here. I know I probably got some gay people in here. What the what? I had a pastor tell me, you got gay people in your church? I said, I might. I might. You know what he said? He said, what you do with them? I said, I love them. What you want me to do? What you want, what you, what you want me to do? We, we, we so weird. Be, because you'll kick a gay person out, but they keep an alcoholic on your deacon board. I'm sorry, y'all. Let's stand up. We got to go home. Come on, we got to go. Stand up. We got to go. 
think what you just heard has been some amazing teaching. I'm not going to take the credit for it. I give God all of the glory. Listen, I don't want this just to be a sermon. I want this to be something that you can use in your life. If this was a blessing to you, or maybe there's something that you just don't understand, please email us at readychurchcot at gmail.com. God bless you. Can't wait to see you again.